If you're a GM fan, chances are you're a big advocate of the Chevrolet small block V8 engine. It was introduced for the 1955 model year. It began production in 1954 and continued production all the way through 2003. And it was found in displacements ranging from 262 cubic inches all the way up to 400 cubic inches, although the initial displacement of the Chevrolet small block was 265 cubic inches. And most people, I would say, are very familiar with the Chevrolet 350 that was basically produced in that size from 1967 to 2003. The Chevrolet small block was undoubtedly one of the world's best engines and there were millions of them produced over that period of time. But if you're a Blue Oval fan, maybe you're getting a little jealous because there is a Ford small block V8 as well. And it was very successful and found under the hood of many different Fords for decades. And that is the Ford small block, otherwise known as the Windsor V8, that was produced from July of 1961 through December of 2000. So really the 1962 model years through 2001 model years. And the most common format of the Ford small block was the 302 cubic inch so-called 5 liter V8. And for those who are fans of 1980s era music, perhaps you recall the 1984 Sade single, Smooth Operator. Well, this Windsor V8, particularly in the 289 and 302 cubic inch form, and I would say in the 1971 and earlier years, we're going to focus on the 302. So let's just talk about the 302 from 1968 to 1971, because that's really peak Ford small block, at least in my mind. Those engines are really smooth operators as well. As mentioned, the 302 would be introduced in 1968 and would replace the 289 cubic inch engine that came before it. That 289 had a 4 inch bore and a 2.87 inch stroke. Very over square design. In other words, the bore was much bigger than the stroke. For the 302, Ford would expand the stroke to 3 inches. So it would be a 4 inch bore, 3 inch stroke. Actually, the exact same bore and stroke as the Pontiac 301 and the GM 2.5 liter Iron Duke four-cylinder engine, but here really obviously nothing is shared. This is a totally separate Ford V8 engine. Now, when Ford introduced the 302, they did an ingenious thing, and that was they used the same pistons from the 289. They just used shorter connecting rods, so there was less overall upfront tooling costs, and they got a little bit more displacement out of their small block engine. The most common 302 cubic inch V8 during this time frame was a 210, 220 gross horsepower, 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, 289. And it was found in full-size Fords, full-size Mercuries, some of the sporty vehicles like the Cougar, as well as the Mustang. And there were those two-barrel versions, and there was also an optional four-barrel version that made 230 horsepower. So it really wasn't necessarily a powerhouse in its normal format, but it was an extremely smooth operating engine. And part of that is because it had almost 300 or around 300 pound-feet of torque at about 2,600 RPM in most of these configurations. So while the horsepower didn't seem all that great, What's most amazing is if you drive one of the full-size cars, in particular that's equipped with a Ford 302, you really think there's something with more displacement under hood, unless you really step on the accelerator. And it's not bad, I would say. It just doesn't have a ton of passing power like a 390 or a 428 would. But driving around town, the 302 is an absolutely smooth and enjoyable engine. Pretty much, I would call it faultless. Now, the 302, as I mentioned, was called the Windsor V8. And Ford had a number of different V8s. Most people, I think, get pretty confused over the 351 cubic inch Ford V8s because there was the 351 Windsor V8, there was a 351 Cleveland V8, and then there was a 351 modified V8, which was really based on a Cleveland, but uh, the 351 modified was kind of a downsized version of a 400. So that's a video for another day, why Ford had three 351 cubic inch V8s. But just remember, this 302 is, again, called the Windsor V8, and that's because it was made in Windsor from 1968 to 1978. As the years would go by, the emissions regulations that came into play in the early 1970s would cause some reduced horsepower ratings. And also, there was a new net horsepower rating that was introduced in 1972, 
where engines were rated with their exhaust systems and all accessories and air cleaners before that, they're rated on a gross horsepower basis, which did not take into account the exhaust and accessories. So this 302 cubic inch V8 went from around 210 to 230 horsepower in 1968. And then by 1975, power was really dropping to about 122 net horsepower. And that was in some full-size vehicles. So I wouldn't say that the 302 in a full-size vehicle in the mid-1970s is very peppy. In fact, I've driven a number of 351 modified 1975-1976 LTDs, and they're pretty doggy unless you really richen the jets and the carburetor. That helps significantly. They're just jetted so lean from an emission standpoint. Another interesting fact about the 302 is that it actually, while it was often called the 5-liter V8, it really didn't displace 5 liters. It displaced 4,942 cubic centimeters, or 4.9 liters, and more precisely, it was 301.6 cubic inches. So I think Ford really called it the 5 liter because they had a 4.9 liter, 300 cubic inch inline six cylinder engine, which was another excellent, indestructible, smooth Ford engine. We're going to spend some time on that one a little bit later because the 300 cubic inch inline six deserves its own video. But in any case, the 5 liter, again, after that emissions era, got throttle body injection and then later multi-port fuel injection. And the horsepower rating started to creep up yet again. In fact, all non-high output 5 liter engines for 1983 had throttle body injection. And then for 1986 and beyond, they had multi-port injection. You can tell that by, you'll see this EFI 5.0 badge on the top of the engine. That means it's got the multi-port injection set up. Now, there also were a number of special 302 cubic inch V8 engines that, well, you couldn't necessarily get under hood in your full-size vehicle, but the Ford Boss 302, for example, engine, otherwise known as the high output 302, was in the 1969 and 1970 Boss 302 Mustangs and Cougar Eliminators, and it was just an awesome, awesome engine. Still had Obviously the same 4-inch bore, 3-inch stroke, but a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio. And it made 290 horsepower at a relatively high 5,200 RPM and 290 pound-feet of torque at, again, a relatively high 4,300 RPM. And this Boss 302 V8 was much different than the regular 302 that you'd find under hood in the full-size vehicles. It had 4-bolt mains versus the 2-bolt mains in those particular engines. It had solid lifters. It had threaded freeze plugs as opposed to ones that you just kind of push in, if you will. And the heads had a different valve design that allowed for larger valves. So it had some really unique trick features and it was developed for the 1969 Trans Am Road Racing Series. The block was also different and had a taller intake manifold on top of it. So not a lot that's interchangeable between the Boss 302 engines and the regular 302 engines, but how could I do a 302 cubic inch V8 video without mentioning the Boss 302? But let's now take a real listen to a 302 running from 1968 and also drive the vehicle in which it is equipped. This is my 1968 Meteor Montcalm, a Canadian vehicle. Well, it was sold in other countries as well, but principally Canada, and it's equipped with a Ford 302 cubic inch V8. So let's take a listen and also take the car for a drive. And it looks so small in the engine bay there, but that's it. This car still has its original plug wires, distributor cap, radiator hose, it says Fomoco on it, radiator, I've changed the coolant, changed obviously the oil, the Transmission fluid, power steering fluid, brake fluid, all the fluid changes. Original master cylinder still on it. But just a gem of a little engine in this car. It's so quiet. Here we go. We do the famous reach in start. And interestingly, no fan shroud in Canada. That's how it came. I guess they just didn't care that much about safety.
standard mirror, manual adjusting mirror. This car still has its original stock exhaust. And there's the dealer badge, Guthrie Kingdon Mercury in Sarnia. Just whisper silent. All right, well, let's go for a ride in the Meteor. Oh yeah, smooth and silent 302. And you'd think that a 302 would have trouble powering this big car, but it really doesn't. And it's a gem of an engine. It's so smooth and quiet. And it's lighter than the FE motors, like the 390 and the 428, so it actually doesn't feel nearly as nose heavy. And as a consequence, the car is really a pleasure to drive. I'll show you the cool turn signal there too. And you don't hear this engine really running at all. This car still has its stock exhaust, which is whisper quiet. I just honestly love this engine in this car. And I have a number of 390 powered cars, both the two barrel 390 and the premium fuel 390. And I have to tell you, getting out of those and into this, I don't miss the extra cubic inches in power just because this one is so gosh darn smooth. Let's take it out on the main road and hear it a little more out on the open road. And here we are, we're off. Four-door hardtop cruising is great. Get all the windows down, get the fresh air, breeze. Doesn't get much better. People poo-pooed four-doors for the longest period of time and they still do saying, Oh, that car's got too many doors. Uh, no. Anybody who's driven one of these knows how special they are. In fact, I often prefer the four-door hardtops over the two-doors because you get that truly open and airy feel that you don't get in the two-doors. And the two-doors usually have lower roof lines, too, which doesn't give you as much glass area in the cabin, although this four-door hardtop also has a lower roof line versus the four-door pillared sedan that was offered. But the best adjective to describe this car is just smooth or silent. You don't hear the engine. You don't hear road noise with the windows up. It's just an absolute pleasure and joy to drive. And even at idle here, this engine, you really don't even feel it running. It's so perfectly smooth. I can't say enough good about these cars. I do love the funky meteor maple leaf in the middle of the otherwise common 1968 Ford safety padded wheel. Every Ford in 1968 had a wheel that looked like that. And you won't win any drag races with this 302, but you're not going to have any trouble keeping up with traffic. So overall, if I would have bought this car in 1968, I would have been extremely satisfied. Good brake feel, smooth and silent engine and transmission with good torque, little road noise, good comfort. The other thing I will say is Ford bench seats to me aren't as comfortable as GM bench seats of the era, but it's about the only gripe I have in the entire car. Thanks again for watching. And let's close out with one last look at the 302 V8 in this meteor running. Here you go.